Welcome to Lesson 3 in our series on personal evangelism. In our last lesson, we began to discuss the important concepts that must be established with an individual as you begin to speak with them about having a personal relationship with Jesus. We covered that a person must understand that there is a real heaven, a real hell, and every person will spend eternity in one of these two places. Now that you understand these basic concepts, we can turn our attention to the gospel, which is simply the good news of Jesus Christ, and consists of His death, burial, and resurrection. Some people might wonder, why is it called the good news? Well, like many things in life, if there is good news, then there is often bad news. And so is the case with the good news of Jesus Christ. Before we can establish the fact that there is good news to be shared with someone, we must let them know the bad news first. By learning of the bad news first, a person will more fully appreciate and understand the good news of the gospel. The bad news we must share is that we are all sinners. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Many people do not think or do not want to admit that they are sinners. They do not think that all includes them that they are excluded from the definition of all. However, we know that all means all, and there are no exclusions. Romans 3.10 also states, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Most people think that they are okay, are not as bad as the next person, and therefore should be allowed into heaven. However, it is critical that a person understand that they are a sinner. It does not matter your race, age, sex, who your mother or father were, where you lived, where you went to school, what type of job you had, whether you are a conservative, moderate, or liberal. We are all sinners. If you can get a person to understand and realize that they are a sinner, they still might ask, well, what is the big deal? I'm a sinner, just like everyone else. Sounds like we are all in the same boat. The big deal about being a sinner, about being born a sinner, is there is a punishment for being a sinner. The Bible tells us in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. The wages refer to the payment or penalty for our sin. There is a penalty for being a sinner, just as is there is a penalty with breaking a law of the land. There is also a penalty and punishment for being a sinner. Notice the penalty is associated with being a sinner, not with the sins committed. The sins committed are the symptoms of the underlying condition, a sin nature. It is because of our sin nature with which we were born that we deserve to be punished. Romans 6.23 continues to tell us that the payment or penalty for our sin is death. When you tell a lost person that the penalty for their sin is death, then they might ask, well, what is the big deal about that? Everyone's going to die. There are no exemptions to death. So it sounds like, once again, I am just like everyone else. We are all sinners and we are all going to die does not sound like much of a punishment to me. For this reason, it is important to understand to what death the Apostle Paul is referring in Romans chapter 6. Paul is referring to the spiritual death of a person, not the physical death. A spiritual death means the eternal separation from God forever in hell. We know this because, as we have already discussed, that God resides in heaven. If a person is going to be separated from Him or not be with Him, then that leaves only one other place a person could spend eternity, hell. Therefore, the reason for the gospel is because everyone is a sinner and deserves to pay the penalty for their sin nature by being in hell for all of eternity. To summarize the bad news, we must first share with someone that, number one, we were all born with a sin nature and are thereby sinners. Secondly, because of our sin nature, there is a penalty that we must all pay and that penalty is eternal separation from God forever in a literal fiery hell. However, our conversation does not stop with the bad news. Remember, we have some good news to share. The good news that we have to share is that someone has already paid the sin debt for all mankind. Because of this payment being made, no one must pay for their sin debt on their own. That someone is Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, He bore the sin debt of the entire world. That is the sin debt of everyone who lived in the past, present, and future. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that Christ, the God-man, 
that had never sinned literally became sin for us. He bore every sin that would ever be committed that day he died on the cross. What a love Christ has for every person that he would bear our sin and pay our sin debt that day on Calvary. Not only did Christ die on the cross and was buried, but he miraculously rose himself from the grave three days later. You see, if Christ had just died on the cross and not risen again, we would still be dead in our trespasses and sins. The gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There have been many false gods throughout the ages, but there has been only one God that raised himself from the dead and is still alive today. Someone might ask, how do you know he is still alive? I know he is still alive because he lives inside of me and I talked with him today. Because of the good news or gospel of Jesus Christ, anyone can freely have eternal life in heaven by placing their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We have learned in this lesson that there is some good news and some bad news that people need to understand. With an understanding of these elements, please join us for our next lesson where we will learn more about the consequences of our sin nature if the good news is not accepted.